welcome back to the Hilltop Pillbox here in Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada. And today I have the pleasure, the absolute pleasure of uh, showing to you all the great stuff that you can get with Historical Board Gaming's brand new offering, Global War 2025 Meltdown. I was privileged enough to be one of the designers on the game, did a lot of play testing. Uh, my buddy Colton helped me out with that and a couple of the other friends from uh, a couple of years ago. It was, it was just a great time and we really enjoyed it even uh, as we had to kind of cobble together armies and whatnot to make things work. But now we got everything we need to play the entire game. Now you may have already seen some unboxing videos on some other channels. Uh, I believe Admiral Seabass has done some. I know General Hand Grenade has. And I'm sure there's been some others who have done some uh, great unboxing videos and it just just came out like two days ago. Uh, so what I'm going to show you on here though are all the things that you can get from Historical Board Gaming. Just go onto their site. You can buy the game of course, absolutely. But there's some just some amazing uh, extras that you can uh, use to just just enhance this game. Um, just it, it, this stuff look, just looks amazing. So I'm going to bring some stuff into camera view here. I, I rarely shoot on a tripod, so uh, it's not not always a uh, a successful adventure for me. But we're going to give it a whirl here. Okay. So the first thing is is that you have the coasters, right? We all know the coasters. Yeah, cardboard coasters are double sided, and so you'll have a a you know, the the west and the east on the side, right? East, oh, two easts. And then you have uh, the two wests on the side. But, you know, if you got six players, you know, everybody gets one. Or two players, of course, you can use them how you wish. So that's the coasters, we're all used to those. But you say, Hilltop, you know, I'd really like to have something to, to just kind of show everybody I got this game and I can't really carry coasters around. Well, it is your lucky day. You can have these stickers. Yes, you can get stickers, and we have all the factions plus the neutrals, right? Everybody forgets the neutrals. But these are just on a uh, sticker paper. You can take it, put them on your. Uh, you can put them on your box. You can put them on. Uh, well, anything. Put them on your guitar case when you go busking. <laughs> people ask there you go so some stickers are there for you as well and you say you know what I like the coasters but I need something a little bit more substantial maybe something that will uh, hold up to some you know a little bit of spillage and whatnot well we present to you corkboard roundels okay and you of course not roundels pardon me coasters <laughs> that you can get in all six factions there you go so you can get those. You say, you know what, Hilltop? That's really good. I like those. Those are nice. A little bit meatier. Keep things right up off the off the playing surface. I really like that. But I'm really looking for something that can take the heat. That'll just be bulletproof stuff. And might I then present to you ceramic coasters. That is right. These are actually ceramic coasters. And they are heavy. And you can hear how solid they are, right? So, see, heavy. All right, heavy ceramic coasters. So, you have a variety of things that you can order from Historical Board Gaming uh, to take care of your beverages. But wait, there's more. Yes, there's more. There's more, there's more, there's more. Because maybe you want to have your own mug of coffee, cup of joe. Well, now you can. In a 2025 Meltdown mug, this one has NATO on it. And of course, the Global War on the other side. But you can grab this and any of the factions from Historical Board Gaming. And it's a great mug. You've probably gotten Historical Board Gaming mugs before. Excellent quality. Use them all the time. Really enjoy it. And hey, they fit right on that coaster, no problem. All right, then you say, you know what, Hilltop? I wish I had something, you know, to keep that, that you know, like that cold pop, 
that cold drink warm or cold keep it cold and and maybe the condensation doesn't run off onto the game board well hey look no further you can get yourself these handy dandy little mug and can holders there you go and they work beautifully here you got your special forces on there and of course nato again you say you know what that's that's great i appreciate that hilltop that's that's great but you know sometimes i have a bottle that just isn't going to fit well look no further than yes you have little bottle holders as well here's one in blue and on the back it's got a zipper so if you've got a thin bottle that might shake around a little bit in this no problem you throw it in and zip it up and you're good to go amazing little uh, invention I love it capitalism is for you and me alright so there you go you can keep your beverages safe and cold and not condensating on your game board. I have had games ruined by condensation. So I totally understand all that. But that's not enough. You say, you know what? Sometimes I just wish that I could show everybody who I am representing during the game. Who am I going to be this game and, and what's it gonna be like? Well, I tell you, once again, HBG has outdone itself with these handy dandy dog tags. I'm just going to do a little zoom in here. Yes, these are dog tags for each faction. So you got NATO, Pacific, you got Russia, China, the Caliphate, of course the US of A, and then there is one from just the, the Global War logo on it and different artwork. And a little shiny there. But there you go. They all come on the beaded chains and they're just ready to go and they all have the Global War Meltdown, the 2025 Meltdown logo on the back. Just wonderful. So you could wear those around your neck with pride as you're playing. And maybe if you've had a little too much stuff out of bottles like this, you can look down and remember what side you're playing. All right. Now, we also have, because sometimes bills are just too hard to play with, we have got chips we have got chips we've got your chips right here all right and all the way up to 25 yes and these are good looking chips and on the back side of each of course is the global war logo again all right. but just four denominations easy to remember and they are plastic as well so they're gonna last a long time and this is my set of chips here Look back out comes in a wonderful tray that also has a lid keep it dust free so things don't get all messy and mucky while you're waiting between games so we'll just put this money back in here Oop, goes in there all right so there you go chips I love chips love them so much easier than bills and a fantastic choice. As a little side note, one of the other uh, corkboard coasters I got was the Global 2025 Meltdown logo. So if you, if you are not wanting to be a particular faction for your drink to sit, pardon me, sit on, there you go. All right, and now we have Whoops. Oh, my cat will get that one. Now we've got some gorgeous D6 dice. Ah, too slow, cat. Gorgeous D6 dice. They really have that nice shine to them, and it really fits the theme, the motif of this game so well. And I really like these ones. These are like a smoky dice, kind of smoky gray. I really like that. Um, and those are fabulous but we also have to remember that we roll d12s in this game as well for combat and a few other things and so you got the d12s all the different varieties and this one here really caught my eye all the cloud really nice 
So there you go. Some fantastic stuff. And you can get all of this at Historical Board Gaming. Now, you say, Hilltop, that's an awful lot of dice. That's, that's just going to make a big mess. You know what? If Historical Board Gaming wasn't your company, you'd be right. But fortunately, they have built a dice tower. So here we go. We're going to back off from that a little bit. And this dice tower is indeed a beautiful thing. Just slapped it together. It doesn't take much at all. And you can even see they've got images on the dashers as the dice head down. So you grab your handful of dice and you attack. Boom. Hmm, not bad. All right. So you have a dice tower. And this is not flimsy cardboard. This is not going to fall apart on you. This is made with that tough... Uh, I think it's acrylic. So it's got beautiful artwork all over the side and the other side as well. And see, I can pick this thing up with one hand, and right? It's not coming apart, right? But you can take it apart easily if you want. So there you go. Just beautiful. And the little thing I like at the very bottom is uh, I thought it was a nice touch. <laughs> Death. Right, the Special Forces logo uh, at the bottom of the dice tower. I thought that was a strong choice. All right. Uh, now, as you may have seen on other games, we have all of the cards and the player aids are just so nicely done up. I remember when we were designing these and talking about what should be on it and what, what could we do without and all the rest. And uh, they settled on a really nice, nice card got everything you need to know about what you're buying. Uh, it's got lets you know about your missiles that you get to fire, all your strategic move and the, the rail, see the air. There's your plant phase sequence, pretty simple. And it tells you about the special ability for each uh, faction. And you have some, just some amazing, uh, fun special abilities. These guys have insurgency. It's pretty nasty stuff. Uh, <laughs> yes, kind of. Take stuff over. Good stuff. Uh, NATO, of course. And then China. And the US of A. Last but not least. And they've got lots of missiles. And they got they can move stuff around like crazy. But boy, they're needed everywhere. And then, of course, you have a really nice technology chart. Very simple. Right to the point. No... No must, no fuss. It's a die roll. One, two, three, four, five, six, and boom. And you can see that some of the factions have the same stuff, uh, which is awesome because you can counter pretty much everything somebody throws at you if you're willing to spend the time, money, and energy on it. So that is... Oh, that's not all. That's not all. That's not all. But wait, there's more. All right. We have some more, we had those round stickers, but there's also rectangular ones, still stickers on the papers here. One for each faction, where it's got the name of the faction on it, and the symbol, you get the neutrals again, and then you just have the flags. I thought these looked really cool. I thought these are, I thought these are really nice. Um, they just, they pop, just nice, plain flags. So you can order these as well. NATO. There you go. Look out. So, wonderful stuff there. All right. We're going to move that off to the side because we're going to bring in some more stuff. It's amazing all the stuff that this game can support. It is just fantastic. You have your setup cards. Are these just the, the best setup cards ever? You just, you can't make a mistake with these things. Uh, it's just simply written, boom, boom, there it is. Nice big cards too, these are big, right? Big, 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 big setup cards. And it's, it's yeah, and that's, that's one of the things that happens in games is sometimes setups get so confusing that people forget things. I forgot one in my, one of my most recent games, I forgot to put a fighter down, all right? Well, not with these, right? Very simple, very nice, big, bold. All right. 
and easy to read. And there are, for each of the factions, these come with the game, of course. These are not extras. These come with the game, as do the all the other charts that I've been showing you. Then, of course, as all great historical board gaming games have, you have got your timeline and your IPP tracker. And you've got little silhouettes where each faction starts. How easy is that? There you go. And of course, what would the game be without an attack? And defense battle board. Now they're printed, they're double sided, so of course, HBG will send you two. So you can have one on each end of the table or wherever you need it. And these are made with good. Uh, heavy quality cardstock, so they will survive quite well. And we'll show you the map in just a moment. I just honestly didn't have the, the space for it. But here is the rule book, and this is something that I really, really like. The rule book is so well laid out, nice and clear, easy to read, very accessible. Back out a little bit here. And very nicely explained and it's full color of course just gorgeous so when you get this rule book uh, it's easy to sit down and just get going and it's really not that big of a rule book and a lot of the rules that you get in here uh, are going to be familiar to you some of them are brand new of course because it's a futuristic sort of war game uh, but it's very well laid out, very simply laid out, and lots of color. And of course, at the back, you get your nukes. It says optional. We like the nukes. Nukes are fun. And you can use those to, eh, what do we say? Soften up the enemy. But something I really like about HPG games is that they will help out with strategy if you've never played before. And so here you got some strategy for all six factions that will help you organize your thoughts when you've never played before and give it a whirl. Okay? There are some things when you look at the map might might look like obvious choices, um, but sometimes there are also traps. There are things that you can get sucked into, kind of like Vietnam was a bear trap and or sorry. Vietnam was a quagmire and Afghanistan was a bear trap. So, with Global War 2025, that can happen to you as well. So I'm going to pause here. We're going to show you the map and show you some of the neat things about the map and some of the units as well. All right, the board has been set and the stage has been set for a massive conflagration east meets west. So this is, of course, the entire setup of the game. We'll get that Canadian back where he belongs there. But this is all the different pieces. I'm going to talk a little bit about them and uh, give you a quick flyby. You can see that the map is very crisp, right? Not a lot of confusion as to where your starting territory is, that's for sure. Pacific is quite crowded with ships. That's good. Like a, lots of shooting. A target rich environment. Down here we have blow up boxes, of course. We have the Korea Peninsula, Korean Peninsula. We have Taiwan and Israel. And so, because these areas tend to see a lot of action and lots of build up, uh, they are very uh, well, it's important to have a lot of space. <laughs> so, on the board, North Korea, South Korea actually has not bad space. Taiwan's a little crushed and in the middle of what's going to be a very busy sea zone. And of course Israel, well, we know the situation they find themselves in. So that's, uh, that's how the game is ready to go. Now a few of the things uh, that uh, I've put out here, I've put out the uh, neutrals. I've just used white and then I've just used orange uh, markers to denote uh, the extra with the chips. Uh, I thought that was uh, kind of a nice choice, kind of bright. Uh, but they also, actually, there's a couple of frigates on the board here. 
And the Brazilians actually have a couple of cruise missiles, so that's always handy. And then over here you've got a little bit more of a concentration of the neutrals. And of course Mongolia is doing what Mongolia does. Now, the uh, I'm not going to do a, uh, an informational session here, I'm just going to talk about some of the units. So, some new units, we've got the frigates for the west. And these little guys here, they look pretty cool, I like those things. And the frigates for the east are little, well, see, it's a little guy there, a little guy. Okay. And then beside the little guy here, we've got your destroyer guided missile destroyer and then the guided missile destroyer sculpt for the west all right uh, there's a, a couple of really neat sculpts I like here as well uh, the LHDs here we go and uh, you can see they can carry drones with them uh, but they're just a nice little kind of about the same size as the carriers were in the original Axis and Allies offering and uh, they're a little bit more diminutive, but then you have the super carriers, and I just love these things. Look at look at all that room. You can park two planes on there, and still enough place to have a good old game of football. And uh, so the and the planes fit just beautifully on there. There's no overlap. And you're not you know even if you move your hand past, you're not going to be bumping planes off. Obviously, old helicopters. And then you've got different types of nuclear missiles. Of course, we've got our ICBMs. And the ICBMs are shared. Uh, China has them, America has them, and Russia has them. But then the other powers will have the intermediate range ballistic missiles. So that's for the Pacific Coalition. And the Caliphate actually got their hands on some. Ouch, in real life. <laughs> Uh, but the real nuclear deterrent that's out here is in the form of these bad boys, these ballistic submarines. And you can get your sub-launched ballistic missiles and uh, send them anywhere you want. And you can see that these ballistic missile subs, when you set up, you can put them anywhere you want. Right? So you've got an American one and a Russian one. We've got one from NATO, another American one. We've got a Russian one down here. Right. China has one out here, China and the Pacific each have one out here, and then even NATO decided to throw one there. Really doesn't matter where they are, uh, so they can go wherever they want and nuke whatever they want, so that's a lot of fun. And I think that's pretty much it. I talked, oh, I don't know if I talked about the drones, but everybody has some drones to begin, and uh, they're just, they're nice and cheap and they're fun to shoot. Um, you can carry them around, move them around on the ground, or you can uh, put them on the carriers or the LHDs. Uh, oh, before I was saying special forces, which is kind of what we were calling them. In fact, when we in the initial uh, time we were making this, about I guess it's about three years ago now, we were we had different special forces for everybody, right? So everybody had their own special forces names. And then we decided, uh, Doug decided, and I totally agree, and probably some other guys, that we want to just keep it simple. Uh, you know, the, the term beer and pretzels game came out a number of times. And so instead of being special forces, it's just airborne. And the airborne is the same, doesn't matter what faction you are, and they have very similar stats and all the rest, right? So the big thing in this game is movement. Uh, if you can move around and block places, that's what you want to do. America definitely has the most movement, and the Caliphate has the least, and everybody else is kind of in between. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun, fun game. And I am uh, now going to be uh, setting up a nice video for this, which you will see in the next week or two, uh, hopefully sooner than that, hopefully in the next week. Yeah, but we all know how things go. So uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this little bit of a look into Meltdown 2025. I highly recommend picking up this game. Uh, there, it's just unbelievably fun. Uh, it plays quickly, and you can play 2v2 no problem, or 1v1, or 3v3, right? It works really well. 
And maybe if you've got one person who knows the game really well and you got three noobs, then yeah, you can you can switch everything up and, and go and it works really well. This is a very forgiving game um, because you know what? If you slip up, eh, launch a nuke. You know, at least if you if you you know if you're gonna lose, you might as well lose by creating some sort of a nuclear winter and uh, have some fun. Um, <laughs> so many other games, you know, you just kind of wither on the vine and you see it you see it kind of going. But uh, this way, go out with a bang. All right, well, there you go, folks. That is Global War 2025, The Meltdown. Hope you enjoyed it. Head over to Historical Board Gaming and pick up a copy today.